Hey guys, this is Mark. In this lecture, we are talking about variables. Uh, variables are important and they're used in any programming language, in any programming environment, whether you write it with code or if you develop applications without any code, you will be using variables. If you're not familiar with the concept of variables, that's okay. Uh, it's actually quite easy to understand. So you can think about a variable as a just a little guy that has a name that can remember just one thing and you tell that guy what that thing is and that guy is going to be just uh, keeping that value until you ask for it and say hey what is the value that you have and those values could be anything strings dates numbers email addresses collection of strings collections of objects it doesn't matter. It's as long as it is a value that can be represented in that programming environment, you can assign that value to a variable. And then later on within that program, you can request that variable and say, Hey, what is that value that you have? Fairly simple, right? Of course, the best way to understand it and uh, see how it works is to see it in action and most importantly, try it out. So in this example, uh, in, in this lecture, what we will do is we will go back to the calculator that we implemented in the previous lecture and modify the logic for that calculator using variables. And you will see how much more compact and easier to understand that logic will become. So without any further ado, let's switch to UI Builder and start exploring variables. I am in the UI Builder now and I have here the calculator page that was developed in the previous lecture. It is recommended that you go through the previous lecture and develop that example so you have something to start with because that will make it so much easier to see the actual value of the variables bring to the table. If you would like to keep your previous example and want to make a copy of that page to start working with the variables, it will be very easy to do. Just uh, see what the name of that page is where you develop the example. My uh, page is called Calculator. And to make a copy of it, just click New Page. And then in here, in Create as Select Fork, give it the name and uh, we'll, for example, we'll call it Calculator with Variables. And then the source should be selected, the original calculator page. You don't have to do this, but if you want to keep both versions of this page, one with variables and the other one without, then this is the recommended option. Now that we are in this page, let's switch to our codeless logic where the calculation of uh, for the calculator take place. And uh, it is going to be in this label right here. By the way, let's make this label a little bit larger because I noticed that when we were running previously, it was kind of small. Right now it's 16 pixels. So let's just change it to 40 much better here. So select this label, click on the logic icon. And in here we have one implementation of the content logic data binding, which is responsible for calculating the content of that label. And this is where our implementation of the calculator is. So the, the very first thing that you see right here is that there is a lot of repetition. For example, every time we check the value of the operation property to see if it is add, subtract, multiply, we keep invoking this block. So the block right here, here, and here, it is exactly the same. And this would be a good place to introduce a variable to avoid the repetition of exactly the same operation. So how do we introduce a variable? On the, in the menu on the left, you see under system, there is a section called variables. Click on that and in here you can define your variable. So for instance, if we want to have a variable that knows what the operation is, click create variable and in the pop-up that appears, type in operation. And this will be the name of the variable. You can name it anything you want. The recommended approach is to give it a name that represents what value that variable contains. In this case, it's going to be operation. Click OK. And notice that now in this variable section, there are three blocks dedicated to operation and these blocks are set operation to so this is the assignment when you want to put a value into the operation variable change operation by and then you specify the value so if your variable contains numeric values then you can change this uh, the value of the operation using this block and this one retrieves the value of the operation in our case, we want to set the value of the operation. So grab this block and make it the very first one in the content logic. And 
this guy right here is can be dragged out and put right into set operation. So here it becomes pretty much self-explanatory because it says set operation two, and then we retrieve the value of the operation property in page data and assign it to the operation variable. Please don't become confused if it's if you see operation here and operation here. It really is just a mere coincidence that we have the variable named operation and we're retrieving a property value operation. In fact, if you want to change the name of the variable, you can just click on this drop down right here and you see there is an option rename variable. So if we want to rename it to something like op, there you go. So now we have operation <laughs> renamed to op and that's the name of this variable. Now that we have value of the operation property from page data sitting in the op variable, we can start using this variable because that value will remain there for the duration of this logic right here. So in here in this empty space, if we go to variables, we can drag this guy out into here. And now the logic is exactly the same as before, except we're using variable rather than this value directly. So this value ended up in variable and now we're using this variable. So everywhere where we have the logic to retrieve operation, we can get rid of it and use variable in there. So select this variable and copy paste it and just put it into this empty spot. Okay, that's a little bit better. What else do we see? Well, we see a lot of duplication of retrieving X and Y values from page data. Let's also introduce X and Y variables. So create a variable X and then create a variable Y. And just like we had it before to assign value to the, to the variable, use the set because set has this drop down where we can select the variable. So in here, change it to X and this property can be moved out here. And let's repeat the same thing for Y. So select set, copy paste it, change it to Y and this will be changed to Y. So now there are three variables up, X and Y, and they contain real values. So rather than retrieving these properties every time, we refer to these values through variables. So in here, where we have return, and this needs to be X, let's go to variables, drag out X and put it right here. In fact, everywhere where you see get property X of page data, let's get rid of all of them and substitute it with X. Very good. And now we can repeat exactly the sa same thing for Y. Go and grab variable Y and put it right in here. Copy paste it and put where it belongs. Excellent. So now it is a lot more compact. What else can we do? Well, as a, as a good practice, and maybe it is a matter of preference, but I personally do not like to have multiple return statements in the, any kind of logic because we already have return right here. So if we repeat these returns, it becomes sort of hard to track that logic. And a good practice is, is if you have this kind of structure where you check different things and you end up calculating the result, Let's introduce a variable called result. So that good practice will be to calculate the result and, and have only one return, where we will be returning the actual value in the result variable, right here, like this. And then and in here, instead of return, what we can do is something like this. We will be assigning the calculation result to the result variable and this return can go away. All right, same thing can be done everywhere else. So in here where we where we do sub, subtraction, this goes away. Same thing for multiplication, this goes away. And in here we'll set the result to be the result of the division. There you go. 
I think now it looks way better and it is actually easier to read, it is more compact and so much easier to follow what this logic does. And this is possible only because we introduced variables. As you can see, it is very easy to work with variables, easy to declare one, easy to assign value to it, easy to extract value from it, and variables will make a lot of difference in, in your logic uh, to, to keep it compact, to make it easier to read. Something to keep in mind as far as the lifespan of a variable. So here we are in the content logic, so we're calculating the content of our label. Whenever we declare these variables, and here we have variable op, x, and y, these variables will exist only in the scope of this logic right here. If we go to the logic that is executed by a button click, or anywhere else, or when the page is loaded, those elements of logic will have may have their own variables. So these variables will exist only in the context of this specific logic. If you need to share data between different elements of logic, like we do something here and we need to grab that value from somewhere else, then use page data and then use this set property in page data to assign values that will live across different elements of logic. But variables, they have rather short lifespan and they are defined in this particular logic. Something else to keep in mind, if you assign variable here, for example, we grab the operation and you executed this logic, Next time you get into this logic block right here, that variable will be reset. It doesn't keep that value over lifetime. So the life of variable starts right here at the top. As soon as you return, that variable is gone. So it's only scoped to that particular logic. Let's rerun this application and just see what that page looks like now. So in here, for instance, we do four multiplied by 5. There you go, the result is 20. 4 plus 5, 9, and as you can see it just works exactly the same way. However, the implementation has the same logic flow, but just looks a lot better. I hope you found this useful. Thank you for watching this video, and as always, happy codeless coding!